Graves, Alison the Online Piano and the Online Violin Tutor. Today is a requested video on what fingers to use on the piano. Um, so some of you have actually said to me that you, when you come across a piece of music and there aren't any fingerings to use and maybe you've got a particularly difficult passage coming up or um, it's quite scaly or, or quite arpeggiated passage, what fingers do you use? So some people have, have perhaps said that they've been told in the past by whomever just to use what's comfortable, um, but they're feeling that that's not enough guidance. Well, hopefully I'm going to give you uh, a few hints and tips on and ideas on, on what to do um, if you ever come across a passage that you're having trouble with. Okay, so I hope you can all bear with me. Um, I decided that I would angle the camera so that you could see the music and you could see my hands at the same time. So this is, this is a composition that's actually been written uh, by me um, and you can see how it starts. Okay, so if we were just literally taking the first little section that I did up to here, what fingers are you going to be using? Well, I haven't actually put any fingers in here at all. Sometimes when you get pieces of music, you'll have absolutely nothing. More often than not, you might have a finger or two to use, but actually this is probably good that I haven't got any fingers because we're going to have to work it out all by ourselves. But you can use the techniques that I'm using to hopefully be able to take that onto anything that you do. So what finger are you going to start with? Well, basically you, you almost need to look ahead for this and it might involve a little bit of work with a pencil and a rubber just going through any awkward sections that are kind of flagging up as to you running out of fingers or your fingers are tripping over or crossing over and all that kind of stuff. So take the first section, what are you going to start with? Well you could start with a thumb because, or how I'm looking at it now, you could start with a thumb because there aren't any lower notes than this A here. This phrase, it starts on A and the phrase finishes on A. So you could actually use a thumb potentially. But when you get to this next section here, you, you're going up to an F next. It doesn't sound right to kind of to jump your little finger onto the F and also you can't go because that would also be silly to do as well. So instead of having one finger for every note, what I would do then is move the third finger onto that D because I need an extra finger basically and then I'm all set up for this F here. So doing fingering like this is very similar in the violin. If you play the violin in the, in the piano, you'll know what I'm talking about. But sometimes in the violin, you will get um, you'll get notes that that perhaps you don't know how high or you don't know what position to go into. So you'll have to try several different combinations. So this one here, if we started with a thumb and then moved up to the third finger here on that D, instead of putting a four over it which is naturally what you might want to do, you haven't got enough fingers. So you're going to have to create a finger somewhere here. So what I would do on the music is I would put a finger one here so I knew I could see what I was doing and then I would put a finger three above here so that I knew what I was doing as well. And then we could carry on from here. So I've ended up with a thumb on the A and then I'm going to do the next bit. So I naturally want to put a fourth finger on the D. And then I've got this next problem coming up here because I've got all of these triplets here. I've ended up on a second finger on this B and clearly I haven't got enough fingers here. So I'm either going to have to change something here or I'm going to have to change something there. Now, whether I change here or there will maybe depend on phrasing. So do I want to jump a finger and break the phrase here? Or do I maybe want to, to jump a finger there where it sounds naturally like the phrase is breaking? So if I played, um, I've got a thumb here. So I'd want to put a fourth finger down here. So I've ended up on that thumb on the, the A in the second bar in. I could jump. 
So that fourth finger is not going to work. So. So what else can I do there? So if I start from the, th the third bar in with a fourth finger. That would work if I put my fifth finger there or I think yeah, I think that's the only option that I can do there is to jump. So I ended up I ended up on a one here, which is what this phrase took me to. Then I had a four here. I was gonna leave that. And then I think a five would be really nice to put there. So I'm I'm happy to go with a five. So what I might have to do for the triplets are because I've almost got a row there, I can just quickly slip my thumb on there to keep it sustained, which thus giving me enough time to put my fourth finger onto that E. So that I can do the... Otherwise if I end... I can put my, my fifth finger on this E here but then I haven't got enough to get to the F above it. So now I've worked out the fifth finger on those triplets, I've come up with another problem of not being able to get to the F natural in the next bar. So, you know, I have to, I have to slightly alter it. So I like the fifth finger for the triplet. And in that row, can you see what I did there? I just swapped my thumb in position there giving me enough time to put the fourth finger on the E to carry on. Same thing again. And I'm in a row so I can flip my thumb underneath. So I can see that this music is going up higher here, so I know I have to make room for fingering. So when you're looking at something like this, you need, it, with you're doing sight reading, you're doing sight reading, you need to be looking ahead anyway, but you need to be looking ahead for fingerings as well. If you were up with all your scales and arpeggios and things, all of this fingering would seem much easier. And there's no kind of hard or fast rule as to what fingering goes where and you might do this here and you might do that there. It's really just about looking at the music and sitting down and working it out, especially if there's a piece of music that's sort of giving you some trouble and you don't have anything in it. So that's just a little section uh, there explained. Um, I, I could go through the whole entire piece, but I think that would probably just take ages to do that anyway. But I think... Um, uh, when people have said that they've been told to do what feels most comfortable, mm, it doesn't really help a lot, does it? What you need to do is be looking at the next section ahead or think in terms of bars or think in terms of phrases and see how far your fingers will, in, in that position, that the particular position that you're in, see how far that will take you before you need, before you run out of fingers and you need to move something else. Then if you know the next phrase is going up, and you're going, you know you're going to run out of fingers kind of a bar before or five notes before or whatever, then you can find the kind of the pivotal point, if you like, or the note that you're going to have to stretch a finger. Um, because not everything will work in scales. But as I always say to my students, pieces of music are always made up of scales, arpeggios, broken chords and chromatics all those technical exercises that we have to do for exams and even if we're not we should be doing them anyway um, so because of the pieces being made up of arpeggio scales chromatics broken chords all that kind of thing you can normally take all those fingerings that you do for all those technical exercises and actually apply them to the music but while there are no hard and fast rules as to what fingers to use because it will completely depend on the piece of music there are kind of general rules and hints and tips that, that you can sort of adhere to so you need to be there is no real answer I can give you but you need to be looking ahead to the music you need to see how far will your current finger position take you until you run out the point that you start to run out then maybe you need to retrace your steps back a few notes perhaps so that you can 
change your fingering or find a pivotal note that you need to perhaps instead of playing and playing some notes in scales as you would um, starting with the thumb two three four and five maybe you're going to have to go from the thumb to the second finger and maybe jump the third finger two or three notes higher or something just so you can get up to that next passage which was what I was just about to do so um, I was at bar nine here for example um, I'll put a copy of this sheet in a PDF for you anyway but I was at bar nine for example and I knew I wasn't going to get up to that A there so then I knew that I had to think of some other fingerings to get to the A so it is it is a bit of trial and error um, you, it won't take you long to do it will be worth doing um, but you just need a pencil, a rubber, a piano, your fingers and some patience to go through it but as I said before if you can start going through technical exercises and start learning scales and arpeggios and that sort of thing that will go a long long way into working things out because you'll be in you'll be in the right frame of mind your fingers will automatically do what makes sense to do and because pieces are made up of scales and arpeggios then you'll you'll naturally do what would be natural and what would be very pianistic to do anyway. So I'm really hoping that, that, that I've helped you guys in this um, and kind of not waffled on too much or, or whatever, but there is no definitive answer to the question, but just looking ahead and seeing what's, what's coming up. If you know you've got to go higher, then you know you've got to create more fingers. So you might have to jump a few notes with your fingers instead of doing them in scales. So trying to apply some arpeggios or some broken chord fingering exercises to the pieces. Um, but that's it really. Um, any comments, leave them in the comment bar underneath and I'll try and get back to you. Um, but thanks very much for watching.